Let me let me do a little bit before we go to Seth. Let me do this. Uh, we got uh, Kevin Sanders. Kevin, uh, let me introduce Kevin. Uh, we have a, a call on show. Go, Kevin. Go ahead and uh, say something. Thanks for coming on, Kevin. Hey, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, everybody got a suit on with me. Let me go put on my church. <laughs> Uh, what's going on, guys? Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Kevin Samuels. I run a men's style channel. Um, I just came on to uh, run the call in show. So, you guys that wanted to call in and talk to O'Shea, talk to Sinful Freeze, what's going on, fellas, to register your opinions? Uh, the call number is going to be in the queue. Press one yeah. to be put in the line. And no, no bullshit, guys. Don't be blocking your number. You're going to call, just call, say what you got to say, be brief, and keep it moving. Okay, let, let's do that. And thanks for Kevin to uh, come in. I'll put this channel in. Uh, the number is to call and talk to Freeze. Uh, how long you got to schedule for? Is it 60 minutes or two hours? Kevin? You said what, bro? No, Kevin, how long do you have the blog talk schedule for? Is it like a, a hour show or? Uh, two up to three hours. It'll, it'll okay. Go. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's do this, guys. Call 347-857-3847. If you call in right now, we'll get we'll, we'll have Kevin, Kevin to, to patch you in. Um, three four seven eight five seven three eight four uh, three eight four seven. So to talk to Freeze, talk to Kevin. Uh, uh, let's do that. Three four seven eight five seven three eight four seven. Um, and then let me do this. Shout out to people that's been subscribing to Freeze. I see that he has. Um, we got a little over fifty subscribers. That's not good enough. You niggas is cheap because Jesus paid it all on the cross. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. If you niggas don't subscribe, I'm gonna shut the show down. So let me just do this real quick. Uh, the brother is nice enough to come on and simple to pee. Uh, you know, drop drop the uh, goddamn white man confusing me, man. Get in the goddamn comments, y'all, and and, uh, and subscribe to to freeze is it, man? Okay, the brother is nice enough to come over and spend some time with us. That's the least we can do. You know, you got some, a good channel, got some good game for you. You know what I mean? And go over there and subscribe to hit the bell. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, his channel is about to take off. So I appreciate that. Let me just talk the super chats and we'll go right to uh simple to pee. Uh let me just do this. Uh, O'Shea, when we get a call, I'll let you know. We got one in the call queue. One in the call queue. Okay. Information man, peace to O'Shea and the panel in the chat room. Hey, information man, I'm trying to get you on here to also Diana P. Happy New Year, Shay. Hey, what's up? Black Caesar out of Canada, two dollars. Wake the hell up. Shout out to Simple and Freeze breaking the game. Derek F. I know this is going on Patreon, but they're right. Yeah, man. You niggas are going crazy. Raymond Barber, get the lights up. Mr. Grandier, R. Kelly for president. I don't know about that, brother. Moses Jenkins, the dub for that, dub for that bottom of your jump on the tech. Actually, and Courtney Goofball, you're just like, love cool, bro. Thanks, my brother. <laughs> Another $20. Tony Davis, 1989. Uh, Catch it, Ivy. I'm new to the chat, but I'm not new to the channel. Much respects and blessings to all three of you, brothers. Good to see Simple Freeze over here. Salute. Uh, midnight before midnight, part two. Let's go. Okay. Let's let's do this. We have one in the queue. So simple. You can go ahead and weigh in real quick. We have three calls on queue. Simple. Do you is it okay to go with some of the calls? Or do you want to just weigh in real quick? Whatever you desire to go, do. Go ahead. Go ahead and weigh in real quick. We have three calls on queue, and we'll let the callers talk to simple and freeze tonight. And Kevin, you can weigh in also if you like. Go ahead. Go ahead, simple. Just real quick. What What did you want me to weigh in on? Whatever you want to weigh in, brother. Whatever you want to weigh in, brother. Uh, well, let me uh, just say this before we go in. And everything that you do, be a man. Uh, when I say that, be the truth. And everything that you do, uh, whether you're professing to be uh, whatever, pediatrician, a motivational speaker, preacher, teacher, pimp, Mac, gangster, whatever, whether you're positive, negative, whatever you're representative of, being a man in everything that you do. Strive to be the truth in everything you do. Uh, one of the biggest misconceptions about the lifestyle of pimping is that people think that a pimp is a con artist. People think that a pimp is uh, somebody who uses deception and manipulation to get the accumulation out of these uh, particular broads. But the best way to stay out of uh, an incar uh, incarceration and the best way to start a situation with a woman is the truth and to end it with the truth. So many are in jail, so many are in prison, and they about to lose their whole existence by serving a prison sentence simply because they tried to govern things with lies, they tried to govern things with manipulation. He that lies is not in control. He that tells the truth and that is the truth is in full control. So anytime that you have to lie 
in order to charm and disarm this woman out some pussy, out some money. You have just minimized manhood. You are just totally disrespected. You know what I mean? The game. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's what we believe in. I know Freeze is on one court uh, with everything uh, that I'm saying. Uh, when I get involved with a woman, and you know, I've been on this show in times past. You know, one student was uh, physically, but it's others that I can uh, call right now and they'll be on one accord with everything that I'm saying. When I get involved with a woman or she wants to get involved with me, I pretty much let her know the prerequisites uh, that it takes to be with me. And I know I don't just talk about materialistic things and green papers with dead hypocrites on it. I talk about the adversities and uh, difficulties that uh, may come. I tell her about, you know, there's a possibility that she might go to jail. I tell her that it's a possibility that she could be raped, that she could be killed, uh, that she gonna have discrepancies among her family. Friends might not possess that love that they profess to have for her. Uh, this can bring battleships, you know what I mean, among the friendships. So are you sure that you wanna do this? And that's the best way to start it from the beginning to the ninth inning, be the truth. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's people that's uh, doing life because they really wasn't about that life. Uh, some people think that uh, Pippin is whoever can tell the best lie. And I'm here to tell you that that's a lie. Uh, the best way, you know what I mean, to ever be a pimp is to be a man first. And like what, uh, what Freeze just said, uh, well, that was by the incomparable uh, Mel Taylor. Before you could be a pimp, you have to be a man first. And the reason why the pimp is so different uh, ladies than the boyfriend because you know a lot of these guys are put on Oscar award performances and things acting as if they want to be your boyfriend because they really couldn't afford to be your trick so he had to put on Oscar award <laughs> performance uh, because he couldn't afford to be your trick he had to put on the Oscar award performance being your boyfriend and act as if he cared about what you were saying within the conversation just to have fornication with you uh, but the pimp is not playing for uh, pussy. The purpose of him talking to you is not for the pleasures of a moment, but to start basically a movement, to bring enlightenment, to bring encouragement, to bring some type of empowerment and development to your life. Because if he has not brought any enlightenment, any empowerment, any development in your life, then he cannot say that he pimped on you. Uh, just because a guy charged you for some money uh, or basically got some materialistic things out of you, uh, that's not saying that he pimped. And that, in all actuality, a trick can do that. A con man can do that. But a pimp is one who has basically set up there and gave you uncommon information. Uh, mm -hmm. A woman that basically has opened your eyes to things that you couldn't see. You know, uh, things that you might have had a third grade education when you uh, first got involved with this man. And now you're speaking as if, you know what I mean, you're a Harvard University uh, graduate now, you know what I mean, because you've been with this man. And it even goes beyond just the pimping, because manhood is greater than the pimping. Uh, manhood comes first. And be a man to the square guys out there. Be a man in everything that you do. You know, I know a lot of these dating coaches is encouraging you to lie to women. They're encouraging you to seduce and reduce women by uh, telling them the best lie and all that, whatever you got to do uh, to get some pussy. But I'm here to tell you that you could be a man and be everything that you want to be and say everything that you want to say. And, puss and once you become a man and stop chasing small shit like money and pussy and chase the brilliance of manhood and chase principle and chase uncommon information, small shit like pussy comes as easy as the air of God. So be a man in everything that you do. Simplicity. I'm done talking. Okay. Hey, I just want to say something real, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, because you know everybody talking about how R. Kelly forcing women to do things, you know what I mean? And a lot of people talk about how pimps force women to do things. But I'm going to have to do a video entitled Pimping Against Your Will. You know what I mean? Because I have been forced to pimp. Bro, I'm pretty sure you can relate to me, man. But, you know, sometimes hoes be forcing pimps to pimp, man. The pimp don't want to pimp, but she really forcing this pimping, you know what I mean, to pimp. <laughs> so I just want to say that real quick. Put that thought out there. But y'all go ahead. And let me say something because somebody else – uh, that has a puffed up mind and thinks just because he's memorized some information out of a book from another puffed up mind, he's uh, under the influence uh, that he's actually intelligent because he's debated some individuals that I didn't consider to be intelligent. Uh, but let me say this to you, not to get into any type of intellectual ping pong with you, but my manhood is not governed by the small shit that's according to the small location 
called your mind. My manhood is governed by principles that's bigger than life. So, mm -hmm. you know, ABL, if uh, anytime uh, in the future, uh, if O'Shea want to have a topic, uh, ABL or anybody else that's been blown up to think that they're intelligent for any dumbass reason, uh, you can come on here and you can challenge the pimp. And I always told O'Shea that he could bring all you little people uh, up here because I never thought really anything of you, especially, you know, uh, when it comes to this. Pimp. So, you know, I mean, it's good that you, you know, you know some things uh, about political issues or, you know, you didn't read a, cool, uh, a few little white man books and you saying words that other people are unfamiliar with. And because these people are unfamiliar with the information that's being proceed that's proceeding out of your mouth, they're under the impression that you're intelligent, but Sinful to P don't think that. So in the future, uh, we could definitely put that together, brother, and you can uh, come up here along with other uh, simpletons and, uh, you know what I mean, challenge this game. Let's get into it, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That would be that would be quite interesting to see uh, ABL and civil to be on the same panel. Uh, I'm yeah, I just seen the brother. I just seen the brother make a bunch of sassy statements. Uh -huh. Everything that I would say, you okay. know, what I mean, he would put his panties on and, and get in the comment section. And you know, I could roast, but you know, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna roast the guy. You know, what I mean, because he's a studious guy. He say like out of like ten things, he'll say something every now and then that's meaningful. Other than that, he's uh, another little. You know, carbon copy of a lot of guys that I've seen, you know, in, in the few uh, in the past and even now that think they're intelligent for some stupid reason. But go ahead. Okay, let me let me do this. Let me let Kevin weigh in on what he wanted to weigh in. Uh, shout out to Kevin. Hey um, man, I, I was just running the calls, man. You got you simple and freeze doing a masterful job on this, man. <laughs> yeah, man. You, hey, you, we don't even need to put nobody else on, man. Cause shit, I right. I'm very like. Uh, 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 <laughs> so uh, they got a crack in here, man. You know that's why I just tonight I just I'm letting them I'm letting them do their thing. They they running it. They running things over here. Let me so, uh, let ABL ABL my boy, silver my boy. I you know I could definitely uh set that up. Like I said, I know we got the London shout out to the UK dudes. The UK dudes wanted that work too. So uh, ABL he got he got the the pimp the pimps pimps calling him out, and the black dudes in the UK want him. So uh, ABL is going around making enemies worldwide. Okay, how many callers we got? We got one now. Two of them dropped off. Two of them dropped off. Okay, so let's do this. We we gonna uh, get to the callers for the rest of the show. Okay, G give me the number. Mm-hmm. Be number, uh, uh, Kevin. Three four seven eight five seven thirty eight forty seven. Okay, uh, eight, three four seven eight five seven thirty eight forty seven. Guys, if you call in, uh, we'll take your call. Everybody okay. calls, we'll take a call. You go to the first caller, uh, 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 Kevin. All right. Caller eight three two. What's your first name? Cabbage. I think you say cabbage. Is that your first okay. name, Carla? Yeah, cabbage. Cabbage. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, let's, let's yeah, go ahead. Yeah, double B A G cabbage. Okay, what you okay. got for us? I want to talk to the. I want to talk to the people for uh, Central P. Uh, well, uh, I really don't want to talk to you, but since you're on the show, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, you go ahead, cabbage. Be respectful now. You got the pimping on. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, I'm not, I'm you know, I'm a whole I'm kind of 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 i am was to tell a pimp she got some money and she been there to choose him. What can she do with what can what can the pimp do with that money that she can't do with it? What a pimp gonna tell her? Uh, I don't understand the vernacular of a male stripper named Cabbage. Somebody translate that to me because I didn't understand uh -huh. the name that that person said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he said something about if, if, uh, if a whole got some money, what can a pimp do? What is money to hey, hey, no. as, a matter, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna take this time no. out uh, to promote no. my brother. Uh, I want about fifteen hundred dollars. I want, I want, I want, I want you guys to take out the time to. Uh, Go to Kevin Samuels' uh, channel if you uh, <laughs> don't know the right cologne to put on. Uh, you know what I mean? And I told you guys to value yourself and value the information, but a lot of times you still got to have the right attire to get your desire. Appearance is uh, everything as well. 
you can't be the first impression, you know, never do you get a second opportunity to repeat it. So by all means, man, go to Kevin Samuel and uh, learn how to dress, get your right uh, uh, flavors. Go over there to Kevin Samuel, man, hit the subscribe button, the bell, you know what I mean? And also share his videos as well. Uh, but we can understand uh, the brother. He's uh, very distorted. And there's other callers that want to speak. I don't know what this brother is saying. I'm ready to move on to the next caller. God bless you. Okay, look, I, I think, I think, okay, so let's, let's get rid of him. But I think what he was saying yeah, is, what can the pimping do with the money that she can't do for her? So she got $1,500. I think uh -huh. what he's trying to say is, why should he? I'm trying to translate what the nigga was talking about, man. You need to stop bringing that Pepto Bismol. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay um, well, first of all, number one um, is because everybody always talk about money management and all of that. Uh, but what he can't do, first of all, she's coming to him because he has an abundance of information and that information that he has, you know, can empower her for the rest of her life. Because like I always say, a woman can only sell pussy for so long, but she can sell game for the rest of her life. So, you know what I mean? Uh, she is in need of that information, number one, you know what I mean, on how to accumulate more money. And even as far as presiding over money, nine out of 10, majority of them, damn near all of them, don't know how to preside over no money because if they come from poverty or urban community, they definitely don't know how to preside over no currency because the moment that they get it, they're going to want to spend it. And that's the mentality of a hoe to pretty much live day to day uh, she hit for three thousand dollars a day. Now she want to go to the Louis store. Uh, she just uh, hit a little ten thousand dollar lick. She want to get some jewelry. Now she buying her little boyfriends. They got good ass dick. Some gym shoes. Uh, now she got to send money to her mama. She got to uh, send money to her baby mama's boyfriend. Is locked up. You know, before you know it, that little ten thousand dollars man is eight to fuck up. So if it don't be a wise man behind that gold mine, that gold mine never get an opportunity to turn into, you know, I mean, some more currency. So that's why it takes somebody with a high intellectual capability to preside over it, such as the pimp. Okay, let me let me go to uh, uh, a free same question. Um, I, I think that what the brother was trying to say. Seems like my, my man was uh, missing a few neurons, but uh, <laughs> he was asking uh, if if a hoe got some money. And she want to choose a pimp with this money. Uh, he said something along the lines of, "What can the pimp do with the money that the hoe can't?" Yes. And, and see, uh, it's a lot of things that the pimp is gonna do with the money that the hoe won't do. It's not that she can't do it. It's just that it's extremely unlikely that she won't do it. But beyond just what's done with the money, it's what the money is being spent for. And just like Simple said, you know what I mean? She gonna get game. And not just game, but she's going to get guidance and she's going to get structure when she gives this money to the pimping. See, there's a lot of things that she's not going to do on her own, you know, and see, you know, the dude who called, no disrespect to him, but he probably, you know, a trick because he's thinking about spending. You know what I mean? Like she's spending money on the pimp like like he probably spending money on a hoe. You know what I mean? But beyond the mentality of just spending money, you know, because like bro said, most people in the urban community, unfortunately, they think in, in terms of spending money instead of sustaining it. You know what I mean? And see, with the pimping, the pimping is going to not only sustain the money, but he's going to increase the income, and the money is going to come in a lot bigger and a lot more consistently. Because like he said, if the bitch hit for 3000 or 10000 or something like that, not only is she going to spend the money on, on foolish things, but she's going to lay up and kick it like she hit the lottery, like, damn, I, I made 10000 you know, normally I don't make this for, for, for two weeks. So that means I can sit up for at least a week, maybe two, you know what I mean, if I don't just blow it all today. Whereas if she give 10000 to the pimping, she going to get right back down. You know what I mean? It's, it's going to be consistency. Like, no, we ain't we ain't made change your life money right now. This is, you know, a good head start. But this isn't change your life money. So we got to stay down until we get change your life money. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, there's so many that don't don't have a pimp and that's been selling pussy for five and ten motherfucking years and the only thing she got to show for it is a car that ain't paid for, a hotel room and a bunch of Louis and Gucci bags. So, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it's going to take a wise mind to preside over this money. Otherwise, she's just going to be another statistic with a few materialistic things, but nothing of value 
uh, to preside over in the end. So she pretty much ended up being like she might as well have worked a square job for 20, 30 years. At least she would have had the little dental plan and 401k and all that little square ass shit if she was going to do some little shit in the game. Okay, let me let me do this, uh, guys. Uh, let me. Uh, we got two callers, right, Kevin? So uh, three, four, dropped. seven. They, no, they let's dropped go. off. They dropped off. Okay. So listen, y'all. I broke Kevin off for coming on. He asked me thing. I dropped him a little donation. So the least you guys can do is get the likes up. Okay. So we got him back. We got him back. Okay. Do me a favor. I, I actually need to do one thing. Participate. Call into the show. Okay. I'm over here spending my trick money. Not going to spend on these holes. I'm going to South Africa in about a few hours. I got to go back there real quick before my class starts in the next week. So listen, I'm spending my trick money. Okay, we got the pimping, the pimping, and the nigga in a nice suit taking calls. You're not going to be able to get this no more. So I need you niggas to call into the goddamn show. Oh shit! Oh, oh, ABL wants to. Uh, he's going to call in now. Okay. You get these two calls. Yeah, three four seven eight five seven three eight four seven. Let's go to the first call. Let's go ahead and do that. Call of three five one. What's your first name? Three five one. Uh, my first name is Tariq. Go ahead, Tariq. What do you got for us? Yes, my name is Tariq. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to get your guys' thoughts on any sort of buyer scam. What do you say? All right, eight three two. Caller, what's your first name? We we don't do that over here, Tariq. What did he say? What did he say though? He, he, okay, he called over here using Tariq's name, and he wants to get uh, our point of view on another YouTuber scam. Uh -uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him out of here. Because he's like a white dude. I'm like, well, why did name Tariq? Yeah, I didn't want to I wasn't gonna say nothing derogatory about Tariq anyway. Uh, shouts out to Tariq and the uh, uh, Mink Slide and uh, all the things that he got going on. Blessings to him, too. Oh, right. his name is his, his name his name is Chad. Okay, well, fuck you, Chad. Go ahead. Uh, the next caller. Uh, area code seven seven three sounds like a Chicago area code. What's your first name? First name Deshaun. What you got for us, Deshaun? All right, man. I'm just calling in to get some advice. I feel like it's a bunch of better with some game. I'm ready to you know consume as much as I can. First question is, I'm gonna give y'all my my. Uh, Position. I'm in college, third year student, so I'm a mechanical engineer. Okay. I'm at a point in life where I feel like I'm doing well, trying to get my feet together. However, right now, women, I, at least in my age group, it's like they have a higher market value because I don't have any like substantial money or no job right now. So it's so hard to like pull girls and things of that nature. And I'm trying to figure out how can I keep my sanity until I can, like, get myself stable because now that I ain't got much, you know, women, like, try to, like, knock you down and say you ain't shit, you ain't got nothing, you a broke, a broke-ass nigga, to say the least. So how would you say that I can come back that nonsense and deal with it at this present moment seeing that I don't have a lot of cash? Okay, who do you want to, who do you want to go that to? You want that simple? He could, he could, uh, go ahead, bro, you got it. Um, sample, who, who, whoever can answer the question, really, I mean, we can start with sample, it don't, it don't make a difference to me, I'm just going to listen. Okay, go go ahead, go ahead, freeze. Uh, see, the thing about it is, uh, what it sounds like is that you're allowing the women who are turning you down, based on the fact that your income isn't where you want it to be, you allowing that to affect you, and that's understandable. But see, the thing about it is, you got to ask yourself, like, okay, what do I have to offer these sides? You got him. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead, you got to ask yourself, like, what do I have to offer? you know, a woman besides just just money. You know, the thing about it is you gotta you gotta build the equity in yourself, you know what I mean, as far as what you got to offer a woman. See, cause it and, and, and it has a lot to do with confidence. Cause I know me myself, if I was a quote unquote broke ass nigga, I'm still gonna be able to that's just the mm -hmm. confidence in my mm -hmm. I can have whatever whatever woman I want. I just really believe that. You know what I mean? And like with that confidence you're going to have, have the mindset of it being their loss. See, right now you think it's your game, like you're lucky to get a woman being this broke-ass nigga. Like, damn, I, you know, whenever you talk to a woman because that lack of self-esteem is there, it's like, damn, uh, you got your fingers crossed, your arms crossed, your eyes crossed, like, damn, I hope she, uh, you know what I mean, <laughs> accept me when I get at her. You know, you got you to gotta get over that money thing. You know, everybody – Cold part about it, a lot of these bitches that call themselves turning you down, 
they probably broke her than you. You know what I mean? But you so caught up in the fact that it's a woman, you you lose sight of that. But if you were mindful of that, like, man, she probably just as broken. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, going to increase your confidence. Like, damn, we on the same playing field. All right, bitch, you broke. I'm broke. Now what? You know what I mean? Like I said, you got to think about what you have to offer a woman besides just that. Because it's a lot of sucker-ass niggas with more money than you and all these women combined, but they don't have nothing really to offer a woman besides just the money. And the money is only going to take you so far. You know, if you if you want to wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, then, yeah, the money is going to do that for you. But if you want a woman that's this, this, this worth having, you know, a woman that's gonna, that you're going to get some longevity with, you know, uh, it's going to have to be more than just about some money, you know. So, you know, if, it, if it's about money, go to the whole stroll wherever you at or get on whatever website and, and, and call somebody, you know what I mean, give them a few dollars and they leave and, you you know, you get your satisfaction off, get your rocks off, and that's the end of that. But if you want a woman that, that like I said, that you want some longevity with, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be about more than money. And just thinking about myself, you know, uh, the the longest relationships that I've had, you know what I mean, was y'all know what kind of relationships I'll be having, you know what I mean? But the longest type of relation, the longest relationships that I've had were with women that I didn't really have nothing when I when I first met them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And because of me being the type of man that I am doing what I do, you know, we end up having everything, you know what I mean? I might go to sleep yeah. indigent. I'm gonna wake up with these Benjamins, though. You know what I mean? So that's the video. You know what I mean? But, but, yeah, man, like I said, bottom line is you gotta build the equity in yourself as far as what you got to offer a woman. You get that collar, Deshaun? Oh, there we are. Yeah, I can I don't know what these Benjamins, though. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, you yeah, 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 dude. Hey, okay, Deshaun. All the callers, when you call in, you have to put everything on the background and mute. You can't listen to the YouTube show. But Deshaun, hope you got the call answered. We're gonna have to go on to the next one in the queue. All right. We got, we got, uh, in the queue we got one, two, three, four, five. Did ABL call in? Because he might be seven five seven. Uh, I don't see a seven five seven right now. I got three one. He'll call in. Like he he he, he okay. like uh, challenges. So he, well, when he, he he'll call in. Well, when he calls in, I'll let you know. I got three one. I got three one four next. Area okay. code three one four. Caller, what's your first name? Uh, AJ. AJ, what do you got for us? My question is, um, we are we talking about you know R Kelly and. You know, men abusing young ladies and girls and stuff like that. But what we don't talk about is when when women and older women abuse men and how that has an effect upon men as they grow up and de- and develop, especially if they come from a single parent home. You know, somebody close to the mother. Do you have a show? You have a question for the show we have. I mean, we got two people who got their time going. Yes, well, that's, that's my no, that's my question because he doing he doing good. He doing is, good, Ken. He I, doing good. Let him. Okay, I just wanted to be sure because he go ahead, Carla. Go ahead. Go ahead because I didn't want. How that. can we um? How is we? How can we as brothers um mitigate? brothers that have been abused because it's been going on for so long with him that they came out his brother came out and said that um they were abused as children and nobody checked that so that's what came, that's how R. Kelly developed into his lifestyle. How can he his brothers step up and help younger brothers who've been abused, sexually abused by um Elders, whether it be male and female, to help them along the way because it there was nobody um, I feel like was able to mitigate his development and others that have come along. Okay, thanks, Carla. Anybody got that on the panel? How can we help uh, the men of the community? Because women seem like they get more of the attention. Oh. 
No, no. Uh, he, I believe he was uh, pretty much saying that uh, there have been guys who have been abused uh, by women. Am I correct, Shay, or anybody? Did, did you hear that? Yeah, it yeah, sounds that's, like, yeah, that's yeah. what he's talking about. Yeah, and what what I, I didn't get the opportunity to ask him uh, when he said abuse was he was he saying uh, speaking physically or verbally or what type of uh, abuse? Uh, uh, I don't know. And he's he dropped on he dropped on the line. So you just want to make an assumption and go off of it? Well, um, I, I I would pretty much uh, say that. Um, me, like, for example, even me, those that know my uh, biography, my history, um, those that listen to me and watch me, you pretty much know that I was uh, molested. You know, I was molested uh, by an older woman. Um, you know, and of course, when that had transpired uh, with me, you know, uh, of course, I knew it was because of what I was being taught and uh, holiness. And even the way that I felt at that time, I knew that, you know, this was contrary, even as a, a little boy. Uh, and so when I asked my stepfather, uh, and as a matter of fact, Shay, we need to do a show on it. But when I asked my stepfather, I say, uh, I told him what happened. And, and, and he said, well, whatever you do, don't tell your mother. I said, why, why don't tell mom? He said, because he said, you're a player. I said, I'm, I'm a player? He said, yeah, you're a player. This is what players uh, 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 go through. And I was like, he said, yeah, yeah, man, you get them, don't, because she's going to blow it up out of proportion. So even though I knew that this was, uh, as a little boy, knew that this was, you know, contrary to being right, but I didn't tell my mother, because, of course, I'm listening to uh, my stepfather, who was pretty much kind of like a big brother, uh, and he didn't have a point of reference of what a man was or a father was. So all he can basically teach me is a little bit of good and pretty much ignorance. Uh, so, you know, as I evolved uh, and then, you know, me, I come from because he said a single parent home. Huh? Uh, I didn't have a, a father, you know, physically uh, around me uh, as far as a point of reference of what a man is and, you know, how to do what's vital to the title of a father. Um, as I began to uh, evolve, though, I was able to look at individuals within my community from on the negative side, and I was able to look at certain individuals on the spiritual side. I was able to look at individuals from a political side, and I started picking up little by little of basically what, what I considered to be masculinity or masculine ways and the way they uh, ran their household, because whether he was a preacher or whether he was a pimp or whether he was a Mac or whether he was a gangster, uh, I admired the structure that they had, the way that they presided over their homes and uh, certain individuals. I liked the honesty. I liked the integrity. And as the scriptures say, mark the perfect man for his ways is the end of peace. So, you know, um, a man can't conform to something that he's not informed about. The information has to uh, come into being. So in all honesty, uh, until a, a person get knowledge of self, uh, knowledge of what a man is, uh, knowledge of his calling, knowledge of his individuality, knowledge of his identity, knowledge of his capability. Um, you know, he's pretty much at that particular time the best definition of loss. And what I would have told, because uh, uh, Freeze did an excellent job. I mean, beyond excellent. Uh, but a lot of you, the reason why you so lost and especially why you bankrupt for uh, confidence, because you have no information about self. You value booty and titties and pussy and money more than you value yourself because you don't know nothing about yourself. So before, you know, uh, you know, just I don't want to go too off topic because, you know, I am. But before you <laughs> see you uh, uh, before you seek money and cars and titties and ass and all of that, seek what is what is my ministry? What is my purpose? What's my calling in life? Why am I here? You know, what I mean, uh, what am I capable of doing? And once you find out how beautiful your mind is, your capabilities and who you are as an individual, you'll start valuing you more than you value a titties, ass and all of that. Not only that, it not only build confidence in a lot of areas, 
Uh, but, you know, that's just like if O'Shea or Kevin, if I was a young man and Kevin gave me the opportunity to come to his house and I see the suits going to another area before we go on, if I see the way that Kevin runs his house, uh, Kevin got the way he got his suits in the closet, how this particular color is over here, the gray is over here, the black is over there, how all his uh, shoes uh, look like God spit shined them. Uh, you know what I mean? How he got the cologne perfectly set up here. Uh, how I went to his bathroom and I couldn't find one dirty spot uh, in there. He was uh, the definition of clean to me. So when you don't have a man in the home, um, you know, hopefully in, you know, a church or maybe uh, in school or somewhere, you can find a point of reference. And it's sad that, you know, a lot of times our point of reference is a, a crip or blood or GD or BD or, uh, you know, uh, what people consider to be the scum of the earth, you know, a pimp. But that's pretty much our point of reference. So when you even see getting back to R. Kelly, when you see a lot of things that R. Kelly's doing, R. Kelly's conforming to what he's been informed about because I know I'm from the city of Chicago and the things that he's doing to him is normal to him because that's all he pretty much knew within his childhood. He was abused. Uh, that was normal to him. Uh, sex was normal to him. Uh, uh, being aggressive, because I didn't get to see the survivor uh, surviving of R. Kelly, but Freeze did. And Freeze told me one of the teachers said that, yeah, he was very aggressive. You know, that was that was uh, 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 normal to him. These things are normal to him. Uh, uh, performing uh, lascivious acts, all that type of shit is what's abnormal to you it's normal to him because that's what he was informed about as a young child from his sister. You know what I mean? So, man, uh, and, you know, everybody's not uh, into spiritual, uh, spiritualism or a spiritualist or into spirituality. But I just say this reality is you can read as many books as you want. You can see all these psychologists and therapists and all of that, they be like, well, what can you medicate him with? Can he be treated? And my honest opinion, which ain't got no dominion over what you think, the only deliverance that he can uh, receive is from the deliverer, from Yahweh. That's about it. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just my opinion on that. Okay, we can move on. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many, how many more, uh, more callers? Caller 310. You longest in the queue. What's your first name? My name Will Kev. How's it going? Good. What you got for us? Oh, uh, yeah. I want to hear a freeze real quick, man, because he made a good point earlier when he's talking about his high school experience with some of the girls, man. So I was going to reach out to him real quick about it. Okay. Go ahead, Carla. Hello? Go ahead, Carla. Yeah, yeah, man. Now, uh, about these young girls messing with older guys, man, that's like really true, man, because I remember, I think I was like in the 10th, 11th grade, man. So these girls actually my age. They were dating like club promoters, man. Their mamas knew about it, you feel me? So it was like, it was, it was, I guess you could say it was accepted at home, you feel me? So some of the stuff I like, I don't watch the show all the way, so I just heard these different stories and I saw previews. And it kind of makes you wonder, man, like, did these parents know or what, what was, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of iffy. So I'm not saying they're not telling the truth on them at the same time, though. You know what I mean? There, there is some undercover stuff that be happening. That, one, that was an air on that show, I feel like. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel Hello. you. Uh, He's in. I, 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 I feel Hello. you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did you hear me? Yeah, he got you. Yeah. See, the thing about it is... Okay, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, that, that's why I just want to touch... Touching bases yeah, on that, man, because like, that was very true about what he said about some of these underage females dealing with grown men. And their moms don't about it. So, you know, I, that's why I was going to put my answer on that because I really couldn't comment too much on social media while these balls attacking me. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let Freeze uh, respond to that. Cool? Good man. All right. Go ahead, Freeze. Yeah, see, uh, like he said about the show, um, uh, he didn't want to say that, uh, that anybody was lying or anything like that. But the thing about it is uh, – I don't think that everybody is lying, but just just the same, I don't think everybody on the show was telling the truth as well. And being that this is R. Kelly, because like I said, I earlier when I spoke on this, I, I used examples of 
just normal people like my parents and people that I went to school with. And to be all the way 100 with you myself, when I was 19, I had a, a girlfriend who was 15. And her parents knew me. I used to go over to the house. It was all good. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, after me and her stopped uh, being together, I was still cool with her mother. And I started going to church with her mother and all type of stuff. I was cool with her father as well. But um, uh, because it's R. Kelly, I think what it is, is especially because not all of them, but a lot of the girls uh, in, who was on the documentary was either singers or rappers or what have you. So I know a lot of them probably seen it as an opportunity to get a big break from R. Kelly. So that's why their parents allowed their kids to be around R. Kelly. And I think within that, you know, again, like I don't, I don't believe everybody on there, but I'm pretty sure there was some situations where it started out that way and as a, as a business uh, endeavor and it evolved into a personal thing where R. Kelly might have gotten to a relationship with these young girls. And again, uh, just like with a regular person, I think that, that initially the par- some of the parents was cool with it. But being that it's R. Kelly and not me or, or the dude down the street or the dude who work at the, uh, the, the, uh, the grocery store or whatever the case may be, because it's R. Kelly, you know, they see an opportunity. And it might start out as, yeah, he might be able to help my daughter, you know, become a superstar. But then it turns into a personal thing. It's like, oh, well, that's all good. He still might be able to help her out. Then, you know, when a situation is over with and it didn't go the way that they wanted it to go. Well, we do know that R. Kelly is, you know, everybody sees him as a pedophile. Everybody sees him in this negative light. So we could capitalize on that. That's just like back in the 90s. Um after he was after his uh, relationship with Aaliyah, it was a couple of situations where where girls tried to sue him, and he ended up settling out of court. So um, again, I believe those were types of situations where you know what I mean the girls or their parents or both or somebody in the situation seen dollar signs. It's like yeah, this you know it might have even been plotted out like yeah we're gonna let R Kelly uh, see our daughter. You know what I mean? And then we're going to come later on with these allegations. I think some of the people probably planned it out that way. Mm-hmm. Some people probably premeditated it. And some people probably after the fact, when it didn't go the way that they wanted it to go, as far as they started becoming a superstar, you know what I mean? Then they came with it. But um, the bottom line, uh, to reference back to what he was saying, yeah, uh, there's a lot of situations where it's not as common now, especially because the law is so hard on it. But back in them days, like a lot, a lot of the people that was on that documentary, documentary was seeing R. Kelly back in the nineties and the early two thousands. Back in them days, it like see young people now they can't really understand because they wasn't they wasn't of of an age to remember back then. But it really was a normal thing. Not saying that it was right or saying that it was wrong or whatever the case may be. Of course, in the eyes of the law, it's wrong. But socially, it wasn't just like such a terrible thing. You know, it's yeah. a trip because homosexuality was looked down upon more so than dating an underage girl back in the day. <laughs> now you see how time brings about a change. It's, it's the total opposite now. Yeah, now it's cool yeah. to be a homosexual and it's, it's not cool to date an underage girl. Mm-hmm. But y'all is too young to remember, back in the days, it was the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Like that <laughs> back in the day. Funny thing is, I'll be fifty in March, so I kept saying this in the chat room. Teenagers is a twentieth century invention. You used to go from being, you know, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen to wife. Everyone of I've heard so many of the same stories. Mom, somebody said their mom and their daddy got married younger. Uh, their grandparents got married younger. And because we come from around the same time frame, I, I remember being in high school and them little sophomores getting in the cars with, you know, 19, 20 year old college dudes. And it was nothing. The principal, I went to a Cosby like private school and they had the college boys coming to get the, the 11th grade cheerleader. 
And like you said, we'd have done a flip in 20 years. I know it's hard for a lot of people to hear this, but this is where we come from. Mm -hmm. So I remember. Uh, we got yeah. a couple of more yeah. calls in the queue. Okay. Let me go, go ahead and answer. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll go ahead. Oh, wait, wait, go ahead, simple, real quick, and then we'll go to the call. Go ahead. Um, it was, it was. Oh, let me just say this: when you really sincere about, um, uh, you know, doing something against pedophilia or pedophiles, can't nobody buy you. Okay. If this is my daughter and uh, she was raped or manipulated into doing something with this older guy, and uh, he done did some pedophile shit with my daughter, I'm not thinking about no money. You know, and I know that everybody's circumstance is different, but even if we were broke, I'm not thinking about no goddamn money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, and let me separate and say some real shit. I know everybody ain't going to agree because I could tell that majority of the people in the comment section is some weird, uh, they got a bunch of weird call the police signs in the window. But <laughs> if, if you rape, if you raped my daughter or did anything to my daughter, I'm not going to the police to seek justice. OK, I'm not going to wait on a judge to give me a verdict or, you know, to give me a conclusion that I can agree with. Uh, no. If something transpired with my daughter, why would I wait on a white judge to give me justice for my black daughter? I'm going to sit up there and take matters in my own hand because chances are that he's not going to sit up there and give me what I desire in jail and prison. I've been to jail and prison. And to me, jail and prison ain't doing nothing but saving a motherfucker. You know what I mean? If he got that sick demonic spirit in him to do something, you know what I mean, to, to children. So jail and prison ain't going to do nothing but give him more time to strategize and, and, and get better thoughts to get better results and what he's endeavoring to do with children. So, you know, if you really was about that love life with your daughter, you know what I mean? I wouldn't be. See, these individuals are playing. And they don't really possess this love that they profess to have for their daughters. Just like that guy that was like, R. Kelly's got my daughter and, you know, uh, she's in a sex coat. She can't go anywhere. That nigga didn't give a damn about his daughter. That nigga was trying to get something that he ain't never had in his life. He was trying to get some importance. He was trying to get some shine. He was trying to get some spotlight. Because if you really, I see, I know men they really love their daughter. And when you really love your children, especially the way my mother, Marita Mayberry, used to love me, it ain't a life that she wouldn't have took to protect this life. Mm. And that's why, you know, I mean, it just, you know, it is what it is. But no, I wouldn't wait for the white man. I wouldn't wait for any man to give me justice in a situation that just like little Trayvon Martin. If that was my son, no, George Zimmerman wouldn't be uh, walking around. I wouldn't even have all this, you know, uh, uh, animosity and anger and time to spend on R. Kelly. I'd be too busy looking for George, um, <laughs> you know, but everybody, you know, got different priorities. But, you know, do these people really love children or is it just something to talk about because it's a popular topic? That's all I'm saying. And that's all I've been saying, because you got many individuals in the comment section they gonna say some of the hardest comments. These niggas sound like they harder than the security that used to work for death row, you know, from the 92 and 96 days, you know, but it's not that because if it was really that, you would be doing something outside, not inside the common section or inside the church or where it's safe at. You gotta go outside. And like, I, I'm gonna say it again, I, I said it again, before we go to another call, just let me squeeze this in. Yeah, if you really believe, if you really believe in what you say you believe in, and if you really want a change to happen, you have to enforce it. When anything is not enforced, or if there's any, not any consequences for actions, individuals will commit abominations and won't feel condemnation for it, simply because there's no consequences for it. So if there's no consequences for my actions. 
I'm going to get into a continuity of practicing these actions because there's no consequence for it. The blacks ain't going to do nothing but talk about it. You know, and then like people that's talking about R. Kelly right now, if, R, if they was to see R. Kelly in the flesh right now, they're going to be asking, can they get a feature or an autograph? <laughs> All that people go out the window. But, okay, we get to the question. All right. Let me get on to this when they've been waiting for 16 minutes. Okay. Caller 832. Caller, what's your first name? Uh, first name is uh, uh, Tyrese. Tyrese, what you got for us? I think it's the same dude, but go ahead. Yeah, basically, yeah. I just wanted to... I've been listening to the show for like a few minutes. Um, I just wanted to add uh, a little bit of... Uh, what, what's going on in my mind based on the uh, topic of the evening. Uh, the first thing was what the brother was saying like uh, 10 minutes ago when he was talking about uh, what's going on with uh, the things that happen within families and stuff like that. Uh, the first thing I, I could think of is, uh, I'm going to use the scriptures, um, as black people, me coming from Africa and living here in the, in the U.S. for so long, uh, the curse that's written in Deuteronomy 28 is so evident because in the scripture says there was one, once upon a time, hundreds of years ago, we as a people were organized. Uh, our society was set. It was righteous. But something along the line happened before we were born where everything, every structure, that was set prior to our birth has been reversed or gone to chaos. And if, if you look at American society, I call it it's a hypocrisy society because a nation full of laws, but the people are more lawless. It's like how many laws are in the book? Now, talking about want to call this uh, sodomite uh, R. Kelly. He's just a puppet. And, you know, I know it's, you know, this subject is very attractive to us, want to call black people, but yet again, we as a people got caught up in the web because isn't it a coincidence that this, want to call incident and subject came up as soon as the, want to call government shutdown just happened? And uh, the new year just happened where people on this high from the holidays. And what did they have for us? We got this subject. But what the media will, won't tell us is that quote unquote sodomy and child uh, sacrifice is the basis of all quote unquote empire, meaning. Maybe you guys, some of you out there can see what I'm seeing. You know how they have laws about protecting children and stuff like that, right? But here's the catch. In ancient times, there was in, in certain paganism religion was parents will willfully offer their children as sacrifice to the quote unquote gods. But today, it's not happening quote unquote like that. They've set up mm -hmm. a system where you have broken family, right? Father is not there. Mud is doing everything now. The sacrifice is not bro, bro. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta wrap it up, bro. Hey, bro. You yeah, yeah. Thirty, 30 seconds. Man. I gave you, I gave you a little bit of time because you're on hold. I'm, 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 I'm gonna say this. I'm, I'm gonna say this, bro, so you can, so you could go because I could actually uh, listen and hear, hear it, everything that you said, and it was very mean, meaningful, and it was on point, and I agreed with the things that uh, you said, and hopefully we'll be able to continue this conversation uh, at another time. But like I said earlier, bro, it, it, you, like you were saying, we agree because in the scriptures in the old covenant, you know, I mean, they were sacrificing their children unto Baal. And today they're still sacrificing their children unto Baal. And they still don't, they, they just don't know it. It's on a whole nother level. So, you know, I, I appreciate you for saying that. Uh, and you see what I see. And that that is true. The word is true. Blessings. Shalom. All right. Caller 910. Caller, what's your first name? Chris. Chris, what do you got for us? All right, man. Look, 
I just wanted to say this. When I was in high school, I heard a lot of girls who went out with these dudes that was like 25, 30 years old just because they're judges. And their mom knew about it. The whole block knew about it. You know what I mean? And I'd be like, dude, mm. he's young. He's my age. That's what you're doing. Following him. Well, you know, he got money. He's a go boy. And it, 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 it was normal. Nobody, nobody didn't talk about the dude. Saying he was a pedophile and nothing this and nothing that. So I'm like, <laughs> in my eyes, I'm like, okay, this is weird. I said, oh, he's using you for sex. You know that, right? But in her eyes, look, I'm getting this money. I'm having sex. I'm doing what I want to do. So, this thing with R. Kelly, I feel like I'm, I might take a little left to this, but ever since homosexual started building up and stuff like this, and they on top now, and they're trying to make all these rules and demands, homosexual out there is a gateway for pedophilia, and I just feel like they're trying to open up more pedophilia to make it more right to make the law for them. The reason why I said that, too, because it was an 11-year-old boy that was at the gay club, and they were giving him money. At the gay club, they bring them on to the uh, born in America. So they trying to mm-hmm. put this in the eyes to force us to, hey, all right, this cut of failure stuff is okay, and everything's good with. They trying to make it normalized. They they want everything that's, that's right. abnormal. They want everything to be ab that's abnormal to be normal. And, and these young males that don't have black men in the homes as a father. Uh, they basically are being raised by, as I like to say, BET, MTV, and VH1. And when they look on VH1, they either send some homosexual or some science project that they call a transsexual uh, or some guy, you know what I mean, that's so goddamn feminine, he let uh, some handsome woman talk to him any goddamn way. So, you know, uh, you know, these young guys, man, as the scriptures say, each generation shall wax worse and worse. And because they control the narratives, they able to produce more homosexual and feminine representatives because they in control of the narrative. They in control. They the powers that be. They control these uh, platforms and things like that. Even RuPaul now, he got a show. Uh, 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 then uh, when they do uh, uh, Love and Hip Hop in Miami, it's, it, they got all these male Jezebels on there and it's becoming normal. Now, the, the world is more <laughs> outraged with a guy being uh, with an underage girl than a guy being with an underage boy or, or an underage boy wanting to be a virtuous woman. He don't want to be a gay. Back in the day, these young guys used to want to be a Crip, a GD, a BD, and now these little young niggas want to be Cardi B. The devil got all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you got to say about that freeze? I'm going to go to freeze. Go to the next caller. I'm going to go to freeze. Go to the next call. Uh, caller 718. Hello? Caller 718. What's your first name? Caller. Deshante from Chicago. Oh, okay. Hello? I couldn't. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Couldn't hear you. Go ahead. Hi, right, cool. My name is Deshante from Chicago. Y'all want to ask on the big city. Let me put this in perspective. Yeah, the whole mess of outrage, I can agree with our, our Kelly situation. And I believe that this can be used for the positive output as it can be used as the momentum of staying to help purge the community of other pedophiles, whether it's in the family or within the like, hate for the truth perspective. With that being said, I want to ask what should basically what should be done in the situation. Bro, yo, everything that you said, everything that you everything that you, hold on, hold on, bro. Everything that you saying is the best definition of important, and we all want to hear you. I especially want to hear you. But right now, you sound like you're in the basement talking in a footlocker shoebox. You right. need to fix your phone or do something right now, because right now, your connection and your phone is out of the will of God. Get in the will of God right now with your phone. <laughs> Yeah, if you're on the Bluetooth or something like that. Yeah, if you're on the Bluetooth or on the speakerphone, just go ahead and get on the regular phone. I'm gonna go ahead and put you back on. I think this was the guy from earlier. Cool, cool. Deshaun. Go ahead, speak. Let me see if I can hear you. Hello. Okay, try a little bit better. get your mouth close to the uh out the microphone on the phone and go ahead. 
Deshaun, go ahead. All right. Well, he dropped. Uh, all right. Go ahead, guys. Well, uh, what I will say is I got 8% left on my phone, and that's a long time on this Note 8. You know what I mean? Uh, on the 8% on the uh, Note 8 phone, shit, that might be like 20 or 25 minutes, man. I don't know, but I'm just letting you guys know, you know what I mean, that I uh, I only got 8% left, okay. and I've been enjoying this. I appreciate O'Shea for giving me the opportunity uh, to come on here and fellowship with my brother. Uh, as y'all know, those that watch my videos or seen the video that I've ever done with O'Shea, we got great chemistry. And with Freeze, it's perfect uh, chemistry because we pretty much represent the first thing. I mean, uh, same thing. And not just that, you know, I mean, we pretty much cut from the same cloth. Uh, and again, I want to promote Kev and thank Kevin for coming on. And because right now uh, O'Shea is a novice. With the beautiful equipment that he uh, equipment that he got over there, but he gonna get it together. And be totally <laughs> with it. You know what I mean? But, 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 uh, amen, amen. Everybody, everybody, point your finger at O'Shea and say, "Lord, enlarge his territory, bless him right now." You know what I mean? In the name of this game, we believe him right now. But as of right now, while he don't got the game on how to use the things that he has over there, we appreciate Kevin Man for coming in here clean as hell. You know what I mean? With all the equipment so we can listen to all of the callers with their important thoughts. Because whether you agree with us or disagree with us, you know, some of y'all was petrified, you know, by us. The temperature was a little bit too hot. You know what I mean? People was acting like they was going to call in. I was waiting for them to call in. I was waiting for them to call on, get on, but they didn't get on. They just wanted to stay in the comment section. You know what I mean? To be cute. Uh, bless us to ABL. Uh, but yeah, man, you know, uh, getting back to this, getting, oh, back, getting back to getting back to this game, though, man. Uh, I'm I'm gonna just put some paint where it ain't and say what most can't, you know. Before I get out of here, uh, I want to say that uh, this was not the things that were said was not to justify anything that R. Kelly has done or anything that R. Kelly is doing. I'm not a uh, spokesman for R. Kelly. I'm saying that the brother is wrong. And I'm thinking, I'm saying that instead of us basically attacking, attacking one individual that is wrong, attack the whole population that's active within that wrong. Let's not be selective about who we pick and choose who's wrong. When a person is just wrong, you know, they wrong. So, you know what I mean? If this person do it, that person do it, that person do it, that person do it. Let me also say this, not to stick up for Hugh Hefner, but I see a lot of you people bringing up Hugh Hefner's name uh, with R. Kelly. Listen, uh, Hugh Hefner has nothing to do with R. Kelly. I don't know who brought that comparison up, but that's a stupid comparison. That is very stupid. I don't know if you guys are good at debating, but that is a dumbass uh, comparison. I don't know anything about Hugh Hefner being with underage girls. I don't know anything about Hugh Hefner forcing a girl to do anything against her will. Uh, I don't know anything about Hugh Hefner uh, keeping anybody against their will. As a matter of fact, everybody was fighting to get in Hugh Hefner's mansion. You know what I mean? Everybody was fighting to be at Hugh Hefner's house. I don't know about people trying to leave to get away from Hugh Hefner's house. To get to Hugh Hefner's motherfucking house, it was called an accomplishment. So, you know what I mean? To compare Hugh Hefner with R. Kelly, I understand that you know, uh, some people want to try to always make it a black or Jewish thing or black or white thing. But if you're going to do it, you know, make it logical. You know what I mean? And, and, and trying to compare R. Kelly to Hugh Hefner. Uh, and Hugh Hefner ain't no pimp either. I'm not sticking up for him because he presided over Playboy. He was never a pimp, a great businessman, but he was never this pimping. Uh, he's, a, he's a businessman. That's the difference. If, if Freeze got hoes, Freeze is a pimp. If the Jewish man is presiding over women, He's a businessman. It's a big difference, man. Um, but, you know what I mean? Yeah, Free's just a low-life-ass pimp. You know what I mean? The Jewish man, he's a businessman. You know what I mean? Yeah, Free's a low-life-ass pimp. He's the scum of the earth. You know what I mean? He's he's the motherfucker that, you know, your mama warned you about. You know what I mean? Uh, the nigga that, you know, was charming. They like to work out, smell good, and dress good. Always has something good to say. You know what I mean? And has some things that'll fuck your mind up. You know what I mean? Yeah, stay away from... Uh, uh, guys like uh, Freeze, uh, ladies, you know what I mean? The man is dangerous. He's intellectual. Uh, he drinks with nothing but water, works out constantly, reads, 
You know what I mean? Those are dangerous people, man. Lee, and, he, and he got all his teeth. And he got good hygiene. So, yeah, he's a dangerous motherfucker. Survive and freeze. Uh, but, <laughs> hey, as a matter of fact, y'all look out. Y'all look out for my video called Surviving a Broke Bitch. Yeah, y'all look out for my video that's going to be coming up. I got, I got, I got videos coming out. I'm gonna have surviving a broke bitch, surviving a punk faggot ass. You understand me, maggot bitch, surviving a disobedient I'm gonna be, bitch. I'm gonna be one of the survivors on there. Like, <sighs> so, so hold on, hold on, bro. Let me hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on. So, so, so she was with you for four days. How much money did she give within four days, Freeze? She only gave me seventy-four dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> and and, and, and I went towards the room for the first day, so for three days I couldn't even eat, and I was pimping my ass off. I was pimping so hard. <laughs> okay. And, okay, let me ask you something, Freeze. While you had uh, this particular bitch, was you able to get your car washed? Was you able to get your nails manicured, your hair cut, buy anything uh, value or anything while you had her? Man, I came out the room after we got kicked out, and I came to my car, you know what I mean? And somebody had put wash me pimping on the side of the car in the window because it was so dusty. <laughs> Watch me pimping. Like they know this is the pimp's car and they put watch me pimping on there. And I'm looking at this bitch like, you see this shit? Like, damn, bitch, I want to get my car washed. My nails is looking a mess. I need a haircut. Come on, bitch. But she got to say, bro. Well, ABL wants to call in. ABL wants to call in now. <laughs> Man, I'm on three. He going to wait till I'm on motherfucking uh, 4% and shit. These niggas think they slick. Now they want to come. <laughs> That's the whole move. That's the whole move. That's a, these niggas is doing whole moves, man. Niggas gonna wait till a nigga ain't got no uh, juice on the phone and sitting up there talking about, about the call in. No, that nigga can't call in. You know what? <laughs> what that nigga? Hold on. What that nigga? Blue face say on the dead lungs. No, he can't call. In. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> Uh, I don't see uh, 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 guys, and, and do me a favor uh, for those people. So, uh, this is my second. I did two back to back shows he's today. Sure, he's, here. he's here? Yeah. He called in? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, patch him in. All right. With 3%. But go okay. ahead. Hey, uh, uh, ABL, is that you? Yes, sir. All right. Make sure you mute the background noise and you got it. All right, do I got any background noise? Is everything good? You're good. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, Kev, oh, look oh, like oh, Kev. Yeah, you muted yourself. You muted yourself. Yeah, go ahead. Everybody's good. Go ahead, ABL. All right, I can't hear them. I can hear you, but I can't hear them. Um, they haven't said anything. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, so yeah. All that I wanted to talk about was a comment I made earlier about the lion. The whole thing was, I don't think there's a difference in somebody just outright telling a lie and then somebody using true words or true statements in the creative way to paint a false image. So how did Simple feel about that? I don't, I, man, I thought you was going to call in and say something intelligent, man. I feel like Jim Kelly up in the Kung Fu movie, man. You come straight out of the comic book, man. Um, this nigga didn't fall to get on 2% battery life to say this stupid shit. How do I feel about it? I don't feel no type of way about it, but Hello? Um, when, when did this occur? ABL, he's having, hold on. He can't hear you. ABL. What happened to you? Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why you can't hear. Everybody else can hear, but uh, man, this nigga, come on, two percent, come on, yeah. man, bring it. Yeah, uh, you're gonna have to just patch in on 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 the YouTube channel because Simple's got two percent. 
Did you basically what you said was there's no difference between somebody telling an outright line and just using some words to baffle them with bullshit. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, let me see how simple feel about that. Okay, how which, about how do I feel? I don't have any feelings towards it, but <laughs> I'm asking what compelled him uh, to make this uh, meaningless, uh, you know, uh, statement. Yeah, what made you think about making that statement, man? What, 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 what? What what made you even decide to chime in on? Yeah, that what line? what what, tra what transpired to make you say that bullshit? Oh well, I mean, he was talking, and I was just commenting on what he was saying because he was talking about. Okay, you know, what did uh, I say? People saying lie or whatever. I'm like, all right. Well, what I hear a lot from pimps is that they're very good with words and they paint images in a certain way. But did he say something in particular that made you want to respond? Them, That's what he asked me. Oh, well, well, you, well, you, well, you responded. Hold on. Basically, what's simple is asking us. Are you making what you making a point against him, or are you just making a point? Well, I mean, I don't know if it was against him. I was just responding like he was talking about lying, and I'm like, okay. What I see is that pimps, if they don't lie, they're very creative with words, which can paint a false image for some women. That was my point. Now, if that's if that's him, then it's him. If it's not, then it's not. But that's a general thing I see about pimps. Okay. Okay, right. we're pimps. Okay, watch this. See, he gonna wait till a motherfucker got one percent on his damn phone to come in here with this goofy shit, and I and I can't tear him up like I want to tear him up because I'm on uh, one percent. Uh, but freeze is still on. If 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 he if if y'all can keep this shit going for a good uh uh, uh motherfucking twelve hundred seconds, I come right back in and rebuke his motherfucking ass like he's supposed to be rebuked because. <laughs> I thought he was gonna come in with something like, ah. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, where, where you stand on this? Cause we got a few minutes left on the blog talk, and and for them to have a back and forth, it may do better to uh, drop ABL the link so they can actually respond in real time. Well, I, I, I see O'Shea got himself muted, so I'll go ahead and touch on it. Go but um, I'm I'm wondering where he got that idea from. Like what pimps or what pimping has he done or what pimps has he personally had experience with to, to get this idea that that's what pimps do? Hmm. He's not on the line, uh, Freeze. He's oh, not okay. on the line. Yeah, he's not I'm, on the line. I'm thinking he's still on. No. Uh, you know, one thing, I, let me just go ahead and say this, is I'm a practical man. And if... If you can get some knowledge from someplace, get it and use it. A lot of times people turn their nose up at what they perceive pimps to be, no different than what they perceive Pookie and Ray Ray to be, or the educated lame. And especially as black folks, we are the first ones to sit back and look at our, turn our nose up at somebody telling you some good information because you don't think you agree with the source. We stay so far damn behind because we are consistently fighting with one arm tied behind our back and hopping on one leg, while other races of people will just take knowledge and acquire fucking power. You know, I don't care if it's, you know, there's all, it, when I was growing up, there was the people in the church and the people in the street, but there was always mutual respect between both. They didn't have to agree with each other, but they understood what the hell each other did. Now we got to sit around and act like, you know, well, I, I don't agree with your lifestyle. Nigga, I don't agree with your lifestyle. But we, but you want to fight over whether or not you agree or how can we actually use this to get better on both sides? There you go. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. And I think a big part of the reason why things are the way that they are now is because everybody has a voice. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a platform. Everybody can... Everybody feels like they're important because they can get on social media and be heard. Mm -hmm. So I think before it was like that, you know, so because of that, that's that sense of importance makes everybody think they know everything just because they got thousands of people or hundreds of people listening to them. They believe that they know everything. And this person who might not have as big of a platform or might not have a platform at all, they can't possibly know something that I can use that I don't know because who the fuck are you? What 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 type of following you got? How many subscribers you got? How many followers you got on Instagram? Oh, none. Well, I can't learn none from you. <laughs> right. Hey, uh, O'Shea, you back? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Um, did you hear what I said? I don't know if you heard what I said, but uh, I heard, I heard the last part of. I didn't hear the. Uh, no, what happened was uh, simple. Said he could uh, come back in about a few minutes and then give a uh, ABL at work. Oh, uh, and I said, if if you wanted to do it, it would probably be better if you drop him the link so they can respond to each other on real time on Google Hangout <laughs> because there's too much of, the, of a delay on Blog Talk. But uh, 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 that's kind of okay. where I'll, I'll let it go for another uh, 30, 30 minutes. Um, okay. Yeah, I gotta I gotta get up and get ready to go to Johannesburg. But um, all right, yeah, ABL, if you wanna do that, and man, I'm mad, man. I'm, I, I, now I, I know why I do need that the, the one that you have. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you a question. Yeah. If I would get the one that you have, uh -huh. then it would just it, it would recognize my drivers, right? Yes, it recognize your drivers, and then you'd, you'd be able to take phone calls, and you'd be able to play music uh, and shit like that. Like, like we have the same setup, so everything I could do on my show, you'd be able to do on your show. Everything. Man, the white man held, hold me back, brother. All right, uh, <laughs> we got two calls. If you want to go to me, yeah, let's go. We got we got freeze on here, so let's let freeze rock these calls. Let's go ahead. Uh, okay. Go ahead. All right, let's see what we got. Area code nine one zero. Carla, what's your first name? Nine, yo, yo, yo. Nine oh one. Nine oh one. What's your first name? What you got? Memphis. Yeah, yeah. My I, this is Chris again. I had to call back because I hear ABL talking. And I, I like ABL, you know. He, he a lot of stuff he talking about in politics and stuff, he, he made good point. But when it comes down to the Panther, I don't think he know what he's talking about. I'm gonna tell you why. Panther is more than getting a girl and the girl gets the money and stuff. It's, it's, it go deeper than that because if he if he going deep into what you need to know, the CEOs are true pimps. Why? Because the CEOs don't do nothing. What they do, they watch everybody else make the money and bring it back. The CEO of Walmart, CEO of Target, the CEO of whatever. So Panther. For everybody to get pimped. So when he's talking about, oh, the lies and self-deceit, well, the, your president. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody, anybody who's mm -hmm. in, in charge and who ain't doing nothing and making money and making benefits off another person and they ain't doing nothing, they the pimp. They just how it is. It, it's deeper than, oh, he's telling a female to go in the corner and stuff like that. This man, look, I'm from Memphis, making easy money since the whole inside. That's what Memphis stands for. Now, look. It ain't that hard to get a female to say, hey, baby, look, uh, you get a job at FedEx and you give me your check. That's sign of a pimping, but at the same time, I'm not having her on the street. You see what I'm saying? It's different. I can get her to say, hey, put out this loan and put a house on your, on your loan and get, and get it to me. And I tell you how to multiply and do what we're going to do with it. I mean, my thing is this. Pimping is way deeper than what he's thinking in his head. That's all I'm saying. All right, Chris. Go ahead and put you back. Uh, yeah, what that's, you got, what that's, you got about that freeze. That's true. That what he's saying, as far as pivot being deeper than what uh, the ADL dude was saying, mm -hmm. but where he's going wrong, what he was with, with what he just said is that the pivot don't do nothing. Like he talked, he, he he used Walmart as a reference or the government as a reference. Like they sit back and do nothing, and the people do all the work. It's not that they don't do anything. It's just that you don't see what they do. Mm -hmm. Like when a hoe go to the track, you don't see what the pimping does in order to make her most effective on the track, in order to, to make her even get to the track. Just like with Walmart, you see the the, the cashier, the greeter when you first walk in, uh, the, the motherfucker pushing the shopping carts, but you don't see what 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 Sam is doing in the background, or or his kids is doing in the background. But it doesn't mean that they're not doing nothing. Or right. that they're not doing anything. If they was just doing nothing, then everybody would be doing nothing and getting paid the same way. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> the same benefits. So it's not that they don't do anything. It's just that you don't see what's going on because it's behind the scenes. Cool. We got another one from area code seven seven three. Looks like Chicago area code. All right. Let's see what's up. Uh, area code seven seven three. Caller, what's your first name? Deshaun. Uh, man, how many times you gonna call Deshaun? <laughs> I mean, you need hold on. You drop any money in super chat? You done been Hell on. No. You done been on three times, man. Deshaun <laughs> said, I, I, I've actually been on once, dude. That was another guy. That wasn't me. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Go ahead. What you got? <laughs> Go ahead. 
right, all right. So uh, when Seth the P was on, he was talking about how like what's it called? How now we like normalizing, uh, or not we, but you know, just society is normalizing homosexuality and all these things, mm -hmm. and it's getting to the point where it's pressing upon young men, and we're getting to a point at which a masculine young man is scarce and it's sort of shunned upon where it's more acceptable to be gay and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So my question would be, as a black man who's heterosexual, who's against nonsense and by nonsense, you know, sexual confusion, how, how do we like naturally combat that? Because like in college, they, they like shun you or you, you don't really get, mm -hmm. it's not cool to not be gay. Okay. <laughs> is what I'm trying I, to yeah, say. I, I so like, how do I combat? Yeah, how do I combat that and be like a proud masculine man who like women? Like, All right. that's it. All right, go, I'm going go ahead and let uh Freeze and O'Shea chime on about that one. But basically, the question, basically the question is, how do you still be a man walk? And I will agree, a lot of college campuses, especially here in the states, are feminist kind of bastions of gynocentrism. Uh, and and if you were a conservative man, it's even worse. So, well, yeah. you guys got anything for the young man? Go go ahead. I'll, I'll let Freeze. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Freeze. Well, see, the thing is, you gotta you gotta understand that it's a process that, that went into things being the way that they are right now. So just like it's a it, it took a process to get it to where it is, it's gonna take a process to reverse it or or at least get some balance. You know what I mean? So and you know, and the process has to start. We gotta think about the process that got it here. A major part of the process that got it here is a lack of uh father figures in a lot in a lot of our homes and a result of that being, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, you know, kids going the wrong way. And here you have it, all of this confusion, as you say, being the case right now. So the way that we combat that ultimately it's not gonna be an overnight thing, but we have to, and especially people like the uh people who have the biggest influence, which obviously are entertainers and things like that. Um we have to figure out a way to uh, make it cool to be a father. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it, it, it's fucked up. But um, in the urban community, it, it's cool to be, you know, a paper chaser or a quote unquote go getter. It's cooler to be that than a father. You know what I mean? And a lot of cats will, will, will give the excuse like, yeah, you know, um, uh, I didn't spend as much time with my kids as I wanted to because I was out, you know, trying to make money to take care of them. And yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's understandable. But when that child is grown and you realize how many moments you have missed out in that child's life Say that and shit. you think about things in retrospect, you'll start to realize like, damn, you know, like, yeah, I was, I was making money and, 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 uh, I was able to, my, my kid was able to reap the benefits of off of that money. But if I could go back and do it again, I'd rather, you know, tighten my belt a little bit and spend more time with my kid mm -hmm. as opposed to chasing this money. And, and if more of us develop that mentality, you know, those of us in the urban community, um, that'll that'll start the process of, of combating what it is that he's saying that he's dealing with. You know what I mean? What a lot, a lot of us is dealing with. You, you know, one thing I would tell a young dude, because he mentioned college, college campus. And what Freeze is saying is right. It took a ways to get here. And by the time we fix it, your ass is going to be 30. <laughs> <laughs> what you need to do, man, is you need to get, put your head, first off, you sound like a smart brother. Learn how to be happy with being correct instead of needing to be right. Look, you could be a red pill. You can talk about feminism and MGTOW. You're just going to get beat down on these college campuses because you're outnumbered. They're going to drag you down to the level and kick your ass with experience. Don't go in. Don't just don't go in and looking for arguments. It's not selling out. It's keeping your peace of mind. Go go over to this athletic side of the dorm where the football players are. More men over there. Go into even whether you like it or not. The fraternities. Go into more male dominated spaces and just enjoy your little time there. Or even off the yard. You're not gonna change a university or college to make it be back what it was 50 years ago. And that ain't why you're there. You're there to take care of your business, take care of your purpose. 
bump some broads and get some business contacts. That's what you need to focus on. Let the, the, the benefactors and the chancellors and everybody else worry about, the, you know, the, the college life balance. You are there to get your education and get some access and connections and get the hell on. That's it. No, I, I agree. You want to uh, you want to weigh else uh, weigh in on that also again, uh, freeze. Yeah, see, uh, see, he used the word combat, right? And one thing about combat, uh, if you want to effectively combat someone or something, you have to understand what it is that you're you're uh, in combat with. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times, when when we're against something, we don't want to understand what it is that we're against. But when you have a better understanding of what it is that you're against, you're you're able better to uh, not not only combat it, but being that you're in college, you know, coexist. Thank you for using Blog Talk Oops. Radio. Well, Goodbye. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Go ahead. You, 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 you keep, keep going. Uh, keep going. Yeah. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, uh, basically, uh, I think that the best thing for him to do is uh, try to get a better understanding of, of you know, uh, his peers. The people that he's dealing with that he's you know coming into conflict with. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, yeah, blog talk just shut down. I don't know. Uh yeah, blog talk be doing that gay shit. <laughs> Dude, yeah, man. Yeah. It works sometimes. <laughs> you pay that money for that shit. Yeah, I'm man. I, uh, so um let me do this real quick, man. Get the get the likes up. I appreciate everybody rocking with like damn, it's like damn it, six hours because I had the first show. The niggas started uh, uh, arguing at the end of the show. Uh, we had like 1,200 in that, and then we started it over again. And um, let me just do this, man, because, you know, Freeze came over and Kevin came over. So what I like to do is whenever, time, you know, people come in and show me love and it's nice enough to come on to the show. Um, you know, first, I like to get Freeze has – so he gained about 80 subscribers being over here. He is at 8,079. But I would really appreciate it if we can get the brother over, you know what I'm saying, to 8,100. So listen, um, do me a favor, right? I need 21 people to hit that link to freeze is it and um, hit the subscribe, hit the bell. I would really appreciate it. And I don't know how many subscribers, I mean, Kevin got his on private now. I, I know it's at least 30,000. But, but do me that favor, you know, because when people come over here, we want to give people a reason to want to come on to the show and keep it diverse and come from different levels of the game and different life experiences. This is what make my shows pretty interesting. So uh, I would appreciate it if you did that. So um, let me see what we got here. 8,079, uh, 8,083. Damn, you niggas is cheap, man, with these subscriptions, dog. What's going on? <laughs> man, you, man. Oh, shit, you helped out me back at it. Okay, here comes Simple. Simple, I got 15 minutes for you, man. You can come back on, man. But uh, it's damn near 7 o'clock in the morning here. Come on back on, bro. I'll send you the link. So let's do that real quick. We're gonna let Simple come back on. If ABL want to come on, I'll, I'll do that. I had an interview Ray right early this morning with uh, Miss Trudy out of Nairobi, Kenya. So that was pretty cool. Shout out to her. Who we got here? Uh, Simple's getting back on with ABL. I don't know. I don't know, but y'all need about twenty minutes more because I gotta go ahead. I'm trying to watch. You gotta go. Yeah, I gotta go ahead and make it, but I appreciate it, fellas. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, thanks thanks for coming on, Kev. I'm going uh, to try to call you after this, man. And, uh, oh, no problem. Yeah, hit me yeah. up, man. I'll, yeah. I'll try to see if we can make a solution work in the meantime, though. Okay. And, guys, okay. thanks for, for, uh, for Kev coming on. Uh, go, go go ahead, someone. Come come back on the calls. It's over. White man, he stopped the show. Let's see. Uh, okay, 8,096. I need four more. Four more, okay? We ain't taking ties and offers. We're taking free subscriptions, nigga, because Jesus paid all on the cross. Hit that link. Dang, I'll show you need some rest, brother. I know. That's why your girlfriend coming over here after the show. Nigga, don't worry about nothing. <laughs> you did. Yeah, ugly niggas the style of 2019, niggas. So don't worry about a goddamn thing. Um, go ahead, Freeze. Anything you want to you think you want to say only wait, man? Uh nah, you you know it's a trip. Uh getting back to the to the original topic, the whole uh surviving R. Kelly thing. Right. The boy changed the rapper, man. He kind of he kind of disappointed me, man, because uh, you know, he said that he him making a song with R. Kelly was a mistake, and his reason behind saying that the song was a mistake was because um, 
you know, he didn't value the, the girls' opinions, the accusers. And a part of the reason why he didn't value their opinions is because he didn't see them. And because he didn't see them, he assumed that they were some light skinned, good hair having, you know, uh, pretty bras. But once he seen them and he seen they was a bunch of dark skinned, regular looking bitches, you know what I mean? He like, oh, damn. Now all of a sudden he got a heart. And now all of a sudden he feel they pain. And now all of a sudden he realized that the song that he made with R. Kelly was a mistake. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, why did you have to see him? I mean, if 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 you believe the accusations, you believe them. Why mm -hmm. do you have to see them? Why does seeing the actual victims, what they look like, just their mere appearance, why does their mere appearance influence the way that you think about R. Kelly and, and, and making a song with him? Why does it take for you to physically see them in order to realize you made a mistake? Mm -hmm. no, that, that's, a, that's a good point. Simple, you back, Pam? Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the devil always trying to come against this game. You know what I mean? But I'm back. You know what I mean? Um, but when we was leaving off, not to uh, start on a bad foot or anything, um, you know, and, I, and let me say this. I don't have nothing against uh, the brother. He's just misinformed. That's all. Uh, and, you know, misinformed people. A lot of times the speakers, if they are informed, uh, but the statement that I was making to him were pretty much the question. I was asking what compelled him to make that statement because it was a statement that he made and he was made from what it sound like what he was saying was indirectly, but directly that pretty much, you know, that uh, just because an individual is skillful at talking, that doesn't uh, mean that he's not like the other bullshitter or the liar, just because he has an artful way of conveying things, which to me, I, I think, you know, uh, I heard him a few times and he says some things that's intelligent every now and then. And I know that he's uh, more, he's better than that. Uh, so I'm not gonna hold this against him. You know, I mean, I know that he's misinformed and uh, but by him having uh, some intelligence, I expect him to come, the brother to come better because what he came uh, with that, that was very uh, elementary, uh, you know, because I didn't say anything that was skillful or artful. All I simply said was be the truth in everything that you do. And you can, uh, you can basically keep yourself out of a lot of situations such as incarceration, you know, or just bad circumstances, period just by telling the truth. Because I know a lot of individuals that lied and manipulated and they conned their way, you know, to what they thought was the top, but it didn't last long. So I didn't see con men fall. I didn't see liars fall. I didn't see individuals that had artful way of telling things fall. You know what I mean? But one thing about them truth tellers and them individuals that's the truth, when they lose money, when the women leave, whether they, whatever circumstance they're in, they still get respected and the game always replenish them and renew them and put them right back where they need to be or further and the, uh, uh, and the women that they had desire to come back. Why? Because the man is still intact. He's still the truth. See, the liar, the con man, he got all them things by lying and con. Freeze know what I'm talking about. It was one individual in Vegas. He had everybody food. He uh, fooled people. <laughs> and he had got a, a mansion home. He had got two Porsches. He had the S550. Uh, man, he had everybody uh, really food. And then once the jig was up, you know what I mean? Didn't nobody want to fuck with him no more. Now he hoped he didn't went from mansion living to uh, hotel living. So, no, we don't want to go that route. We don't want to tell lies and all that. We want to be the truth in everything that we do. So that's simply what I was saying. I, I don't know why anybody would want to even debate that, you know, but I know a lot of times, you know, when an individual see somebody representing this pivot or representing this game, you know, they want to sit up there and scratch at the surface and things like that because a lot of little nerdy little dudes, you know, man, they think that, you know, 
they ready for the pimping just because they done battled some other little chronic lo uh, masturbator or loner. They think they ready for this pimping. You know what I mean? Like, see that egotistical spirit to deceive you into thinking that you're ready for the pimping, man. You know what I mean? But as the scripture said from the beginning to the end, be not deceived, son. Be not deceived. <laughs> Because I, I done met a lot of little knowledgeable guys. The people that y'all think that's powerful and knowledgeable when it comes to this pippin, you know, man, you got to understand. I come into the conversation, I already know that this guy is a trick or this guy, you know what I mean, is beneath me because I'm coming with the game. You know what I mean? Period. So, you know, I always know that this man can have more money. This man can have more knowledge. This man can have cars and all of that. But a man that's governed by the game, he still see them individuals as pretty much just, uh, uh, what they are beneath them because he's governed by the game. You know what I mean? And once you learn that, man, you know, you'll stop making all these feminine, you know, uh, statements and things like that, trying to get a pimp's attention. But, you know, uh, anytime that you got time, ABL, to get a cold rebuking, you know what I mean, or sit up there, you know what I mean, to get, you know, spanked. You know, like you've never been spanked before if you want to talk about this pimping or whatever you want to talk about. Because I didn't hear you talking, you know, and, and, and a lot of them guys that O'Shea be having you battling against, them guys is not witty and they're not intelligent. And they got you looking like, you know, what I mean, you a beast when you really a pet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but you know, anytime uh, bro want to set it up. You know what I mean? Uh, we could do this. You know what I mean? So just call them. You know, let them know, like, man, I want to get my subscribers up. I'm ready, man. I want to go, you know, with the <laughs> pimp. <pimping. laughs> and if I got time on my itinerary, man, I bless you, man. You know what I mean? You know, I talk to nerds, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a, this is a where I mean, because if you think about several and ABL, their channels is way different. You like ABL got like I don't know, like almost what 300,000, 200,000 subscribers. So, this is the only where like a, a dude that's been damn near on Fox News and you know what I mean, been to the White House <laughs> and shit can, can battle a uh, 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 pimp. Oh, yeah, yeah I don't care about that. Yeah, you ain't gonna see that nowhere else in black YouTube. What'd you say? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care about none of that. That motherfucker's been saying, "Sin, I want you to battle brother polite. We want to see brother polite. We want to see brother." See, these niggas is like hoes. They they hear a word that they're not familiar with, or a guy speak on a subject they're not knowledgeable of, and just like a bitch, he just easily intrigued and all of that shit. You know what I mean? Not the pimpin. You know what I mean? The pimpin just listen and be like, "Yeah, that's cool. That's cool," but. You know what I mean? I'm not the hoe, man. That's for the bitch to choose. I'm not going to choose on you. I can admire you, you know, for your intelligence. But after all it's said and done, you know what I mean? Uh, that's the tricking. You know, whether he politicking or whether he's uh, whatever he's doing, that's the tricking over there. And it's the pimping. So whether he's been to the White House or whether he tricked in the whorehouse, you know what I mean? He's still not the pimping, man. <laughs> yeah. it, it'd be funny. Uh, uh, I, I, seen, I seen a few people uh, information man, uh, there's a lawyer, new possibilities. He's a civil rights attorney. I've seen, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, what I'll say about ABL though, he he will, he'll, 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 he will show up like a lot of you know, he'll, he'll, he'll show up though. That's the thing. I will show up. He got a competitive spirit, you know, who will show up? ABL, who, who? Uh, he will. I mean, he'll, I don't see him on the road, he'll show up, he'll show up. <laughs> He can show up and do what? I mean, man, I'm simple to be. Man, listen, man. Listen, I mean, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> man, I'm simple to be, man. Like, right now, listen, 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 listen. I look. I, I understand. Niggas got two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand subscribers. They they just said some words within the video that made somebody hit a cute little button. 200, 300,000 times. That's cool. But I'm really somebody out here in the streets. Uh, you know, like. You know, all of that's beautiful, you know what I mean? Yeah, and blessings know, to the little guy. What'd you say, bro? I know, I know certain pimps with zero subscribers <laughs> that'll get that nigga 300,000 minutes of work. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> For real, yeah. Hey, bro. 
hey, we don't give a damn. We go through, man. <laughs> yeah, we, hey, hey, nigga, don't give a, hey, man, we, we debating and uh, sitting over there uh, having debates with manipulators on all type of levels, man, every goddamn yeah. day, man. That ain't nothing. Listen, man, one of the reasons why pimps are so arrogant and egotistical is because our understudies seduce and reduce the, the what you consider to be the, the high and educated of the world. These motherfuckers get manip manipulated by our understudies. So no, we'll never be able to see them niggas like gods. <laughs> never. You can take a nigga that got five motherfucking degrees, and if that nigga get manipulated and seduced and reduced and broke for everything that he got by one of our understudies, why in the fuck would we see that little nigga as a god? That don't make no sense. So, you know what I mean? Pimps, man, you know, uh, it's more than just money and materialistic thing because tricks got more money than pimps will ever have. You know what I mean? So you could be a, a fake motherfucker and have some goddamn money. You could be a fake motherfucker and have subscribers and all of that shit. So, you know, all of that shit is just impressive to another motherfucker that ain't got no importance. You know what I mean? But yeah, he, he can sh he'll show up and he'll get shut down like any other motherfucker that I just shut down, you know, in the pimp game, outside the game. Freeze, no freeze to see me sit up there and get worked to squares. And you know what I mean? We'd have been out in public, man, in bars. I didn't talk to, you understand me, white motherfuckers, you know what I mean, with uh nice little careers and shit, any kind of way. Man, that shit don't mean nothing to this goddamn pimping, man. Them niggas are squares and little tricks, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? After the motherfuckers sit up there and say all these little 15, 20 little words, they about to work their ass off or get them little uh, money that they about to get from their little job. And like I tell these women, no matter how much education he got, when his dick is alive, his brain is dead. And he turns into your personal ATM machine. And all you got to do is type in no motherfucking magical pen. G-A-M-E and G-A-I-N every goddamn time. So he could be a Harvard University grad. He could graduate from Stanford. All these little cute little <laughs> Ivy League schools. That nigga still going to get broke, you know what I mean, by a hoe that's being taught by a Harvard University pimp, man. None of that shit. None of that shit mean nothing, man. That shit, that shit only mean nothing. That, that shit only means something to all the little chronic masturbate motherfuckers that ain't got no life, don't know how to talk to a bitch. You know what I mean? Not really doing nothing in the streets and shit. And, you know, they watch cartoons and they got Spider-Man books, you know what I mean, from the 60s to now. and all that, that, Them type of motherfuckers, man. <laughs> but <laughs> that shit don't matter to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, bless, but, bless us to, but bless us to little ABL, though, man. You know what I mean? Uh, with your show, man. I hope you get to 500,000 subscribers, man. You know what I mean? Square ass nigga. I'll be sitting up there and get to all of this shit. <laughs> matter of fact, matter of fact, I might go over your channel and subscribe just for one night. <laughs> just for one night, though. Don't push it. Don't try to get two out of a pill. Just for one night, though, man. <laughs> oh, shit. You know, hey, 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 did, did we get freeze to that 8100 mark? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we got him to, uh, and, and, to, uh, and did we get my brother O'Shea? And did we get O'Shea, uh, part one to a thousand likes? None of them niggas ain't. I, I know some people was complaining about, uh, I saw some people commenting, it was like, yeah, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't as hot as it. Listen, man, every show can't be. You know what I mean he ain't knocking out the park all the time. So you know the main hey. people. Go ahead. See, see, like no disrespect, but see, that's why O'Shea don't put me on with certain people because he know that I'm a, I'm gonna end up saying some shit. You know what I mean? Because it hey, 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 and shouts out to that nigga Superfly man. You know, Superfly one of my motherfuckers subscribe. He watched my shit, and that's why he told that Cynthia G bitch, bitch, shut up. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Bitch, shut the fuck up, bitch. That ain't my motherfucking... This YouTube shit ain't my motherfucking main motherfucking income, bitch. You don't talk to me any goddamn motherfucking way, bitch. You just a little Cynthia G, bitch. Bitch, it's super fly. I said, go ahead, little nigga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and see, that's what we need today. We need... I, I loved it. You know what I mean? I loved the man, you know, showing that dominion, man. All these little... Peter Pan, you know what I mean? Because I ain't going to lie. 
I love O'Shea, but a lot of people in O'Shea comment section, Sarnetta comment section, it always got to be one of these old African booty tribe motherfuckers getting in the comment section and shit. Our black queens. Our black queens. This is O'Shea. You agree with this. You agree with this, O'Shea. O'Shea, you agree with this. You agree with this nonsense. You bring, you, hold on. You bring this, you bring this fool up here and he keeps our people into captivity. He has a nice way of putting in words and manipulating our women to sell their vagina. I even heard that song, fuck them, go get the money. Fuck them, go get the money. See, he's one of those guys. He's one of those sugar-free type of motherfuckers. You know what I mean? We need to bring real men up here. I love my queen. I worship my queen. I smell her melanated pussy and I smell God. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> when you motherfuckers be making them comments, man, you know, I would kill over my queen. I hate pimps. And I was like, man, you little, you little niggas wouldn't say none of that shit in the motherfucking streets. You know what I mean? You got your dashiki on in your mama house. Most of them niggas, I hate to say it, but most of them niggas in the subconscious community, them niggas ain't got no money. Niggas be going live in their mama's basement. <laughs> I ain't going to say no names. <laughs> niggas, <laughs> niggas got all of this knowledge. They got all of the encyclopedias. They know the origin it is, how this word translate from that. But they can't tell you how to get out their mama house. I'm not listening. No nigga that can te can't teach me how to get out my mama house. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit, like man, I'm taking this shit off, man. Yeah, These motherfuckers yeah. gonna get this channel. <laughs> Man, you, you, you niggas in the first hour, man, y'all niggas said so much flag on shit, man. I'm like, oh, he said that. Oh, oh. I was like, y'all like, right. Then there was I've been seeing things come from under your collar the whole time. Man. This motherfucker's screaming like. <laughs> I, I was just sitting here, you know, because I, I wasn't going to stop the flow, you know what I mean? But I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, cause I I, I I I like to let people rock on my shit when they come through. You know, I was just sitting back, you know, feeling the vibe or whatever. But, yeah, next time, yeah, you know, I mean, we try to clean it up a little bit. You know, what yeah, I mean, make yeah, it yeah. more PG thirteen. You know. Yeah, yeah. See, I, next I next time, next time we come on, I'm a Will Smith at the whole time. Man, I'm gonna use no <laughs> profanity. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna, you know, come on and. You know, clean it up, man. I, I I just wanted to be in the raw. That's all. But you know, uh, next time, man, we'll clean it up and get a PG thirteen version of it, man. It it was just that part one to me was just so watered down. You know, uh, it everybody was agreeing with each other and yeah. singing kumbaya outside and all of that shit, man. I, yeah, I wasn't feeling that was a uh, because it's called was, Sunday. It's called Sunday Rumble, man, and. It, it looked like a fucking tea party. So that's, it, that's it, what it was, I was like. It, it was, okay, I'll tell you what happened. So Cynthia was supposed to be, so, okay, Cynthia went live a little bit earlier. Because whenever she come on, it's going to be some bullshit, right? And actually, every now and then, I, I, can, I can stand it, like, every, you know, seven or eight weeks. So, you know, then, then ABL was supposed to be here. Kev Mack was supposed to be here. I thought you was going to be on there. So I'm thinking, all right, we got Super Size and Leo. We're going to have all these heavyweights going to come through, and it's going to be just off the chain. Then she went live. Irene was over there. Nyla was over there. I'm like, damn, all them people are going to be over here. So then, you know, I had the people that wanted to get on the show. And a lot of times, you know, they just want to talk. So you know what I mean? So I had I had my people on. They was they, They're good, but they just wasn't all good for that topic. Because And then ABL came on, Information Man came on. But by the time it was too late, and then towards the end, that's when the show was the pilot, it was getting out of hand. But if we would have had all those people up front, it would have been a good show. Like we would have had Jew Freeze, and you know, then we would have had some, we would have had uh we would have had a little bit more uh and you know, it would have been it'd have been cool. But it was this is the first time I did a trending topic on the on the rumble. So you know what I mean? So it, it, and George wasn't there. So I, I was I would love in the future if you could set it up some kind of way to have somebody like Irene debate somebody like Freeze. I really want to see more uh, women going back and forth with men. But see, Freeze is more uh, uh, classier. He's uh, 
you know, more uh, well spoken. He, him, and Irene, you know, what I mean, to me, uh, hit uh, hit it off because I could see her making her little points what she think to be right, and you know, instead of a motherfucker like me, they're gonna tell her to shut up, be quiet. You know, what I mean, Bree's gonna sit up there with his fingers crossed and. You know, give her the game, man. You know what I mean? And so, you know, uh, Freeze and Irene, I would love to see them uh, debate. You know what I mean? I, I would love to see that, man. You know? Well, Freeze, man, you always welcome, man, whenever you want to come on, because uh, uh, i like to get y'all on the Hall of Game. If I can get that, that'd be cracking. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Be- or have Freeze on a show with Donovan one day. That'd, that'd be... Uh, cracking, and I know a lot of you guys that's in the fitness, you know, because Freeze uh, like to work out. I'm just getting back, you know, muscle got memory, so I got a little while before a nigga get cool again. But Freeze stayed on his shit, and then you got Alpha Male Strategies. It'd be good to see somebody like Freeze and Alpha Male Strategies, uh, Donovan Sharp, uh, 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 uh even uh. Steve the Dean, uh, who else is kind of like Alan a man? Roger Curry. Alan Roger Curry, you know, I, uh, wow. this this is and see, I, I like shows like that because it pushes masculinity to these young males. Everybody that I just named, you know, got you know some little masculine ways about them. You know, they don't they don't see eye to eye on everything, and that's good. But they still got their little manly ways uh about them and, and when the young people want to learn about the political shit and you know uh uh and learn how to go to the library and all of that you know they can watch abl but as far as you know working out you know and uh being masculine and things like that and looking strong you know what i mean and, and, and hitting the iron and all of that you know what i mean them guys that i just named you know they some good people to listen to like i said you know steve dean and Alpha male strategies, they don't see eye to eye on uh, things, and, that, and that's good. But to you young guys, you know, that don't want to be pimps, I don't want you to be pimps. We didn't say these things to encourage you to be in the game. And just to let you be known, because I was here and seeing individuals, are they really pimps? No. You know what I mean? It's all for YouTube. I just be saying things. I just be saying things to promote laughter. And everything that you hear me talk about this pimping is false. If you ever heard me talking to a woman or something like that, I paid her to say those things. You know what I mean? Those are, that that's, that's my girlfriend. Or they're not my girlfriends and shit. And we just acting. Freeze, he's another actor. He's he's a rapper and he's getting ready to be in the film and all of that. So we just we just some good, you know what I mean, uh, well-mannered young men that just be talking about things, man, that we never done, man. You know what I mean? So it is with it. Nah, I just uh I really appreciate being on this platform and I, I you know I wouldn't mind uh going at it with uh the people that sinful name, you know what I mean? That'll that'll be interesting, that'll be cool, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it'll be I'm interesting. Too, Go ahead. I'm gonna keep it. Clean. I'm gonna keep it classy when I get on there, so it'll be all good. It it it'll be interesting because normally Civil the P don't really interact with uh other YouTubers on panels. He did. Uh, he came on for me uh, last week, and I had my little Hall of Game episode, and that was interesting. In the the, the mix up, but um, most of all the Black YouTube comes over here on on Saturdays, you know, to Sundays to to the show. So all the all the big YouTubers they just come through over here and you know the ABLs and Cynthia G's and Phil from that body <laughs> he'll be over here. Uh, sometimes Tommy Sotomayor will be on the show over here. So uh, it it'd be it'd be good to, to get get the mix up on. But um, I, I gotta go. I'm gonna go. You niggas gotta. You said Saturdays, huh? Uh, well, Saturday we got the little Hall of Game thing, and Sundays. I mean, I got shows going out through all the whole week. But um, it'd it be cracking on here. I, mean, I don't even have time to do my individual shit because it'd be cracking all the time, man. Over on, on this channel, I mean, it used to crack a little harder. You know what I mean? Like about three months ago, we was getting like fifteen hundred people watching live or seventeen hundred sometimes. But you that's, know, that's, that's because you let a few months ago. What'd you say? What'd you say? Uh, 
Uh, I, said, I, I remember I remember seeing those a few months ago. Like I, I think uh, a few months ago, I seen one. You had uh, Phil, uh, uh, Super Sly, uh, Dean, yeah. Irene. I think uh, Cynthia G was on there. And, uh, Super Sly and Irene was going at it real <laughs> tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, yeah, yeah, y'all had it cracking. It was cracking. But what happened was like after. We had a crack and a lot of those people start doing streams like at similar times. So then they took a little bit of audience here and there. And so, you know, people start catching up. So, you know, like certain people have different. And then er at that time, was nobody doing the Sunday shows like I was. Everybody was just over here. But then other people, they start doing more show stuff that we more people start doing the collaboration. So it get harder to keep it up because you get more people, you know, that compete at the same time as you competing too. And then they have shows off the week. So uh, you know, it kind of it kind of kind of has fell down a little bit. But hey, I got exclusive similar uh, exclusive to, to 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 this channel for right now. So you know what I mean. He only come over here. So I, I see what it is. You know what I mean. Y'all started out as new edition. You know what I mean. Then everybody trying to be Bobby Brown now. You know what I mean? <laughs> they, don't, they don't understand. You know, it's only one O'Shea, Bobby Brown. You know what I mean. Everybody trying to you know. Right. Get on that level, but it's all good though. <laughs> right. Yeah, but like before I said, I, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Before I go, I just want to say that O'Shea got one of the best looking comment sections on YouTube. Shouts out to all the ladies. You know what I mean? Uh O'Shea keeps some pretty and not only do O'Shea keep some pretty ladies in the comment section, but they be having nice careers. You know, these women got their own teeth. You know, a lot of these uh, other comment sections and other places, the women be looking a fool. They be more handsome than me. Um, you know, that it, it just fucked up. You know, but shouts out to Dr. Ford, you know, uh, E.B., Frankie. Uh, uh, Paulina was in here earlier. Erica, every time you watch this show, you're going to always see Erica support. You know, with the this woman get more. I remember one time Erica dropped like, motherfucking 10 or 15 five dollar bills within a 10 15 minute period she was just drop that's all i i got five on it she was just dropping you know what i mean fives everywhere you know what i mean so just shouts out to the ladies man you know what i mean because these videos they all right with the fellas you know what i mean but honestly man that's how they become classics with y'all in the comment section because it provokes guys to say the most provocative or most what they consider to be meaningful or profound and it just you know uh compels them to expound on the subject a little bit harder because they trying to impress you know what i mean pretty women in the comment section so you know women always you guys ain't even aware of the power that y'all have but that's all i wanted to say i appreciate o'shea for bringing me on uh love to y'all i want to keep o'shea i know he got to go to bed and i know y'all got to go to bed too Oh, shit, here comes Jap. Yeah, Jap coming in here. He's supposed to be on the show, man. Shout out to Jap, Minister Jap's pool fit, uh, pool fit cast. I got to call my bro, I think, man. I, call I, think this what you I think this is what you should do, Shay. If you take this down, you should probably just do a number two tomorrow and just bring Jap and whoever want to come on, on on tomorrow and have a real rumble and let Jap lead off the shit so the shit could be crazy. Man, I know, I know it. You know, I wish I could get Jap on here a little bit more often, man. Because uh, last time Jap came on here, man, I was at. It was funny, right? I'm about to tell this story. Um, yeah, one of my bitches just left me anyway, so fuck. So she, 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 so I could just say this right now. So, um, I was in Kampala, right? And um, <laughs> so, so. So Jeff had made a video. He was going in on these African, you know, African people and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, you African niggas, you never did shit for us black Americans. Fuck y'all, right? So, so I see the nigga go live, and you know me, I'm I'm mischievous, right? So I hit the nigga. I said, hey man, you know, why don't you come on my um my show and uh we could do the you know do the topic. And uh, it's crazy because I'm in Africa. Why are we doing the show? You know what I mean, uh, Doctor Ford? That's before I was saying, baby. I don't do that no more. That was yelled before, you know what I'm saying? You left me for an ugly nigga anyway, so I had to get my get back. You know what I mean? So, anyways, <laughs> um, I had this, I had this bitch with me. And um and ABL, he shout out to ABL. He know like a lot of niggas who really know me know how I rock like before the show start. And so uh Jeff was like, Yeah, you ready? I was like, Yeah, hey, hold on, man. Check out this bitch booty. Hey, come here. 
I think Jeff was like, damn, the African bitch thick as fuck. And uh <laughs> And it's crazy because we ain't after the Wi-Fi all slow and shit, nigga. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's crazy. It's slow and shit is lagging. And I'm in Africa. He's looking, at the, African, he he looking at the African booty in 3G, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, nigga. It was, and we in Africa. He talking shit about Africans, nigga. I'm, and it's funny because I'm there. And the girl just listening to what I'm like, is this how you feel about us for real? Is this what you're saying? I'm like, shut up, bitch. You know <laughs> And we had like 1,300 motherfuckers in here. It was rocking. It was like, uh, y'all remember that show? It was like, it should have had like 30,000 views or something like that. And um, man, he was insulting the shit out of me. He had motherfuckers mad. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you African motherfuckers don't do shit for us, man. Fuck y'all niggas. And it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a crazy show and shit, man. But, um, you know, uh, he need jab. He be setting shit off with freeze, man. Yeah, jab would have been jab would have been good on this one too, because I know how he feel about R. Kelly. So yeah. he would have been uh, going at it with me and Sinful about that. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. He don't he don't like R. Kelly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would have been a good one. <laughs> so we can we can do it, man. Like I said, man. Um, you know, I, I I had to say this. I got a lot of talented. You know what I mean? A lot of talented friends. You know, YouTubers and shit. You know, um, Sinful. You know. I'm like the the only simp, you know what I mean? I told him, uh, hey nigga, I'm gonna I'm die tricking, so you're not gonna be able to convert me from this this tricking, you know what I mean? I'm gonna trick on these bitches as long as I get a chance. But uh, I got a lot of talented YouTube friends, man, and it helps, you know, like simple the peas, the the jabs, you know, the freezes, you know, pe people are on the other side of the spectrum, like Irene, and um, it'd be a whole bunch of crazy motherfuckers on here. That should be, it'd be hot information, man. Uh, right. It be it be a little here, man. I'm just I'm just grateful to just be in the in the in the in the, in the black YouTube community, man, because y'all niggas are funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a beautiful thing, man. But I ain't gonna hold you. I know you got to get going. Yeah, man. Hey, yeah, thank you. Man. Man. We gonna do it. Appreciate it, though. We gonna, you, did you check yourselves, man? You checked them already. You said what? I don't even give a fuck about subscribers, but you got. Uh, let me see. Before you got uh, eighty-one twelve. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what's up. I. Everybody who subscribed I, and hit that bell, I appreciate y'all. And make sure you go over, man, and subscribe to him and say that, you know what I'm saying? You came from over here. Hit, hit, I'm telling you, his chats be crazy, man. Like, the dude the dude really is, is, is man. If he really was, you know, had a little bit more time to do this shit, man, he'd be killing shit. So shout out to Freeze. I'm a big, like I said, whenever I, when I was in Africa, man, I, uh, I listened to all his story times, man, like the whole entire show. So um, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks again, man. And, and Freeze, let me know when you want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, man. You said what? Let me know when you want to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, yeah, I'm with it. Whenever you're ready, I'm, I, I'm, I'm with it. As long as I know, you know, like I said, as long as we, uh, as long as our, our time, our schedules uh, are in harmony with one another, I'm with it. Okay, okay, hold on. Somebody, somebody else want to uh, subscribe real quick. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, guys, for those of you who want to subscribe to, uh, to, uh, simple, oh, not simple, but, uh, freeze, uh, let me just do this just, just, just real quick, bro. I want to get these people to subscribe to your channel. I put the link right there. So just do me a favor real quick, man. Um, subscribe and hit the bell. Everybody that wanted to subscribe to freeze, hurry up and do it right now. And I'm, uh, I'm gonna give you a shout out real quick. Okay. This is, this is the upper, uppercase P. You know what I mean? So you niggas gotta yeah. subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell them, man. What? Hey, what is a lower? What is a lowercase p, man? Tell them what that is. What that's about. <laughs> well, you know, uh, the, the lowercase p, man. Uh, it, 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 it derived from a joke, but basically, what, what the lowercase p is is uh, basically an individual that's trying to portray themselves as the uppercase p. But once you once you uh, dig beneath the surface, you realize that the, that it ain't nothing uppercase about the p. You know what I mean? P standing for pivot. You know, you got a lot of a lot of cats that try to portray themselves to be that uppercase P, man, but they just don't live up to it, man. They 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 can't they can't live up to the uppercase P, so they really just lowercase P guys, you know what I mean? But but blessings to them nonetheless, though. <laughs> All right. So we got got some subscriptions coming up here just real quick. Thank you guys for subscribing. Uh let's see what we got up to 8124, 8126. All right, man. Thank you guys so much. Thanks again, Freeze, man. I'm gonna be hollering at you pretty soon. Oh, it's all good. Blessings to you. Appreciate it. No problem. Peace.